Welcome back, everybody. A little bit of a different video this time. I thought I would talk to you about uh, the less technical aspects of corporate flying, some of the uh, less glamorous aspects of the job, should we say, and what we do before and after a flight and just kind of how that works. And uh, so I'm in X-Plane here, <clears throat> back in the cabin this time, because this is actually where the flight starts. Uh, we always start back here in the cabin. And I thought I would just walk you through kind of my routine. Uh, I've noticed a lot of people are curious about this because it's not something that you can really do in a home simulator and you know most people haven't really flown on board a corporate airplane or um, had much exposure to this type of flying so um, some people wonder how it works so hopefully you'll find this interesting it's kind of the more boring aspects of the job but you know hey we got to do it so I uh, figured some some of you guys might be interested in this stuff but anyway um, so I'll just take you through kind of a hypothetical situation imagining that I'm out on the road here <clears throat> uh, flying a single pilot trip in the PC-12 and um, I've shown up at the FBO here. So normally you show up an hour before your scheduled departure time or an hour and a half for international flying. And that just gives you plenty of time to get the airplane set up, clean up the cabin, um, coordinate with the FBO, make sure you have your fuel, kind of get all your ducks in a row with plenty of time before your passengers get there. And then it also, um, allows you to be able to leave early if your passengers show up early and want to go because sometimes that happens so you don't ever want your passengers to be waiting on you in the corporate world you always want to be a couple steps out ahead of them so customer service is huge in the corporate aviation world and um, you know in these smaller corporate aircraft like the pilatus we don't have flight attendants so and oftentimes we're flying single pilots so you're the face of the operator you're it uh, you're the only person that the, the passengers are really going to have contact with during a normal trip so you want to give really good customer service. They kind of expect that, you know, I mean, these, these corporations pay a lot of money for these aircraft and um, they want things to be taken care of and they want things to work. So it's a big part of the job. Some guys don't like that. Uh, you know, if you go fly for the airlines, you don't really so much have to worry about that. Um, you've got flight attendants and gate agents and, you know, customer service representatives and all that stuff. Uh, that handle that that side of things for you for the most part at least compared to the corporate aviation world um, and in addition to that um, you, you've also got a dispatcher that does you know a lot of the trip planning and all that stuff for you as well so a whole different ball game there uh, but anyway so I'll show up usually an hour before my scheduled departure time I will have already done all of my flight planning filed the flight plan check the weather check the notams all that stuff done my weight and balance and performance planning all of that in the hotel Usually the night before, definitely, you know, a few hours before uh, the trip, the day of. <clears throat> and then I show up and first thing I'm going to do is coordinate with the FBO to make sure that I can get the GPU connected to the airplane, the ground power unit. So that usually starts at the front desk in the FBO. You'll let them know what time you're planning on leaving and then ask for the GPU. Sometimes when you show up, they'll already have the GPU on the airplane. If you called in a fuel order and asked for the GPU like earlier in the day and said, hey, I'm going to be out there at noon. I need the GPU and this much fuel for a 1 p.m. departure. They'll already have that all set up for you. But you normally want the GPU because you're going to want to run the AC or the, the heater, depending on you know what season it is, to precondition the cabin so that it's not super hot or super cold when the passengers get there. And then also it lets you uh, turn on the avionics and get everything set up so that you don't have to do that with the passengers sitting there waiting on you in the back. So um, Plus it makes for a cooler start as well. So we just want the GPU for various reasons. We'll try to get that if it's available. If not, no big deal. We can use the batteries. And, uh, and then I'll just come out to the airplane, jump in here, and uh, come up to the crew compartment, put my bag up here, plug in the headset, you know, adjust the seat how I like it, kind of get all the creature comforts set up, make my little nest up there, and then uh, come back to the cabin back here. And we always want to make sure the cabin is nice and tidy, straightened up, looking good. So normally there's a trash can <clears throat> somewhere in the airplane um, with a little liner in it. We want to make sure there's no trash. Um, fresh trash can in there all the seat belts are laid over like they are here in the sim looking nice that the seat backs are upright and these seats in the Pilatus actually articulate so if you lift up on this little lever these um, will swivel a little bit so you want to make sure those are um, just straight and um, also I'll climb in the back there and take down that net for the uh, cargo area because I'm gonna want to load bags in there so I'll just take the net down so that's ready to load in the summertime, I'll make sure all these shades are pulled shut 
just to keep it a little bit cooler in the cabin. <clears throat> Wintertime, I normally keep them open so people can look out. Uh, and then uh, we'll come up here to these cabinets. Got four cabinets in the PC-12, two lower, two upper. And usually these are set up fairly similarly between the different operators. So normally you've got ice down here uh, in this cabinet and you know just some soda and water, stuff like that. Coffee's in the top. The Pilatus actually comes with a couple of coffee, th uh, coffee thermoses. So those are kept in there with all the accoutrements, um, all the creamer and coffee cups and stuff. Down here, you've normally got some booze, some juice, and then usually snacks are in this one. So like peanuts, pretzels, all that good stuff is in there. Uh, if it's my first time in this particular airplane, I'll normally open up the lab and make sure that there is toilet paper and hand sanitizer in there and it's looking good in case anybody needs to use that. And yeah, and then normally there's a handheld vacuum, like a little dust buster somewhere in the cabin. And if you need to vacuum anything up off the carpet, uh, you want to go ahead and do that. Just make sure everything's looking good. All the tray tables are put away. Basically that everything is just fresh and ready to go. Uh, and then I'll climb out and go do my walk around. And uh, I've got a video about what that looks like. I'll link to that if you want to check that one out, but I'll go do that and then climb back in. <clears throat> and so long as the GPU is hooked up, I'll turn on the batteries and the avionics and um, start getting things set up up in the cockpit. And normally about 30 minutes before my scheduled departure time, I will go ahead and get the ATIS and the clearance. If I'm at a controlled airport, uncontrolled airports are different, just depends on the situation. Sometimes you have to call on the phone to get your clearance. Uh, more often than not, the weather is good enough. You can take off VFR and pick up your clearance in the air, but uh, I'll go ahead and get the flight plan loaded into the FMS or the GPS. Um, and just kind of, you know, get everything set up here, get the flap set, get the trim set, go through my receiving flow and checklist and just kind of get everything ready to rock and roll up there. And then from that point, um, I'll head back into the FBO, make sure that I've paid my fuel bill. Um, I'm all settled up with the FBO, ready to rock and roll. And then you just kind of sit around and wait. So most of your life as a corporate pilot is spent waiting. <laughs> Uh, very little time is spent flying compared to waiting in FBOs and, um, you know, just kind of killing time. So uh, you'll just go hang out in the FBO, wait for the pastors to show up. When they do show up, you want to greet them. Uh, again, we want to give a good customer service. So you want to help them out to the airplane, help them with their bags, um, help them get in the airplane. You're going to load the bags in behind the net, throw this net up. We want to secure the net so that if <clears throat> we have a sudden deceleration or we hit some turbulence or something we don't want that stuff flying around the cabin so we always want to put that net up uh, and then if you've got passengers that are new to the airplane you want to give them a safety briefing about the exits there are three exits on the airplane there's the passenger door of course and then there's also this overwing exit right here and of course the big cargo door in the back right back there and then uh, we'll brief them on the use of the seat belts the oxygen masks and it uh, looks like the oxygen masks aren't modeled in here they would actually normally be in the armrest right here and you would see a little red ribbon sticking out that you can just pull on to pull that mask out i don't see that in here at all but anyway we'd want to brief them on the use of that in case there was a decompression just kind of let them know what the estimated time and route is what the weather is going to be like how the ride's going to be let them know if they're you know if they get too hot or too cold to come tap you on the shoulder and you can adjust the cabin temperature for them all that stuff just generally make sure that they're comfortable you, you know you're kind of playing flight attendant a little bit too and then, uh, yeah, once everybody's loaded in, I'll uh, go out and just do a quick kind of jog around the airplane. We call it the last 360. So you're just making sure that the chocks are pulled um, if the if the brake is set or that the line service guys are there and that they're going to pull those for you once you get in the airplane. Uh, make sure that I didn't leave any doors open. Um, make sure I took off all the pedoat covers, all that kind of stuff. And uh, just make sure the airplane's ready to fly. And then I'll climb in, close the door climb on up to the uh, end of the crew compartment there, and then just go from there, do my before start flow checklist, fire up and go. <clears throat> and then uh, when we land, I'll jump out, open the door, let them out, help them down the stairs, you know, help them with their bags. And you wanna help them into the FBO, make sure the pastors kind of know where to go, um, make sure they have ground transportation if they don't help them out with that. So, you know, again, we're shooting for like five-star service. You know, you don't just want to dump them off and, and that's it. You want to make sure that they're squared away and that they're taken care of. Uh, and then after they're on their way, I'll come back out. I'll clean up the cabin, vacuum, take the trash out, um, restock the cabinets if they um, took anything out of those, dump the ice out, dump the coffee out, 
Um, if anybody used the lab, you've got to ask for lab service at the FBO. That's always fun. <laughs> and then uh, just pull the shades, uh, especially if it's the summertime. And then, uh, like I said, we do have a, um, or actually, I don't think I mentioned before, but we do have a sun visor that we'll throw up here in the crew compartment to keep the sun out. Uh, take the parking brake off so long as the chocks are in and then just go through the overnight kit on the airplane So that's all the pedo covers the prop straps the exhaust covers all that stuff goes on to keep all the all the bugs out uh, any debris out all that stuff and uh, Yeah, and then close the door lock the door head back into the FBO uh, Just kind of coordinate with them. Let them know how long I'm gonna be there uh, If I know how much fuel I want, I'll let them know at that point and then just get in my rental car or crew car, whatever I have, and go to the hotel and then do it all again the next day or whenever we leave. So uh, if it's a day trip and we're just um, leaving later that night and that happens a lot, then I'll just hang out at the FBO and get a crew car, go get some lunch, come back, hang out, watch stuff on YouTube on my phone, read a book, you know, just hang out and basically just kill time. So, um, but yeah, that's kind of the routine. So hopefully I didn't bore you to death with that, but uh, some people seem to have some questions about it. So thought I would change it up and do a little different one today. Thanks for watching, guys. Leave me your questions in the comments. Uh, don't, uh, don't be shy. Say hi. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. That helps me out a lot. And uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, guys. See you on the next one.